Breath of the Wild. A world teeming with life. But what if this life was based on the creatures found here on Earth? Do hairy rhinoceros really inhabit the frozen plains of Siberia? Do walrus call the desert's home? Today, we examine Hyrule's more domesticated species and find their source of inspiration. Join us as we explore the Biodiverse. Perhaps the most useful animal in the game, we can find horses across Hyrule's fields and grasslands. While we won't go into detail about each and every one, there are 59 variants to find in Breath of the Wild, with most matching real-life coat colors and markings. This species is based upon the domesticated horse and its many breeds. The domesticated horse can only actually possess two possible base colors, those being black and brown. The appearance of lighter hair colors, like chestnut, is due to pigment variation among individuals, with the more pigment one contains leading to a more saturated color. The similarities don't just stop at color, however, as even the markings of these creatures are based on true patterns, of which can be demonstrated by the examples on screen. Such as this bay individual, which has an Appaloosa pattern and white socks. Notice how they're all still primarily variations of brown or black? Even these horses, based on the Cremello breed, have a brown base, their pigments just happen to be significantly diluted. In fact, most real-life white horses are considered to be very light gray or brown in reality. I did say most, however. Pure white horses do exist and are an exception to this rule, as their hair lacks pigment altogether. The Camarillo breed is a hyper-scarce variant that is considered true white. Less than 35 of these individuals are documented today, most of which are owned by extremely wealthy people making the odds of coming across one significantly rare. As such, I believe the Camarillo is the perfect candidate for the Royal White Stallion. There is a sole individual of this type in the entire game, fitting the bill in the scarcity department. On top of this, the in-game description of this animal states it is most likely a descendant of the pure white horses owned by Hyrule's royal family. Therefore, the Camarillo fits both of our listed criteria and is most likely the source of inspiration. So, if we've determined all horse variations stem from brown, black, and white, what about these guys? And what's the deal with this giant horse? While it's true no horses have ever been documented having blue or green pigment, perhaps something more sinister is at play. If my intuition is correct, then these animals represent a malice so evil it would put Ganon to shame. These animals! Maybe signs of connection to long-running conspiracies from American cults to none other than the Illuminati! But that is a topic for another video. In the meantime, we do have one more dopey odd toad ungulate to cover. The donkey! Smaller than horses, these are raised as livestock in the countryside, so they don't exist in the wild. Not much exploration to do here, the donkey is inspired by the domesticated donkey found worldwide. Famously utilized for their ability to carry luggage and baggage, this animal seems to be as near a one-to-one -one port as you can get. What you may not have known is that donkeys originate from North Africa. Sometime 6,000 years ago, they were domesticated from Aquius africanus africans, a now extinct member of the horse family. While this animal does have a common name, of which I'm sure you could figure out on your own. Due to unfamiliarity with YouTube's censorship guidelines, I'd like to start the channel off on good standing. If you're curious, however, a quick Google search should give you the answer.
Moving on from horses, we have a few more domesticated species to discuss. You can find the Hateno cow and white goat commonly across Hyrule farms. These two represent the domesticated cattle and domesticated goat, respectively. I promise we're almost done with animals with domesticated in name. Their in-game descriptions mention their multiple uses for farming, and accessories added to these animals such as bells to keep track of them. This shows these animals are undoubtedly representations of livestock. The Highland Sheep is next and appears to be based on, well, the Highland Sheep. Earth Scottish Highland Sheep proves to be a strong candidate for this animal, as not only do males have elegant curly horns, but a matching white fleece and darker face and legs. Sometimes, matching the species by name is that simple. Not always, though. After our break, we'll continue exploring animals you may find across villages and stables. We'll be right back. The water buffalo and the mountain goat are the undomesticated counterparts of the Hateno cow and white goat, respectively. Namesake-wise, both of these animals do exist in real life, but when comparing the actual variations to the in-game ones, stark differences are immediate. The water buffalo is close, but its horn shape is different enough to be an unsatisfying match. And as for the mountain goat, well that's not even a true goat. While domesticated and mountain goats are related, the latter is more closely related to antelopes than goats. Aside from this, the horn and overall body shape just don't match. Instead, I'd like to point to a pair of animals that would be a better fit as candidates. The Bezor Ibex of the Middle East is a member of the Bovidae family and can reach approximately 150 pounds. While the color scheme is off, we can piece together general characteristics that match both. Known for their magnificent horns, they can grow up to a meter and a half each. These recurved horns match considerably closer than that of the mountain goat. Also, notice the beard? Perhaps you'd call it a goatee? <laughs> Taking this into account, we can comfortably reason the Breath of the Wild mountain goat is inspired by at least Ibex species in general, if not particularly the Bezor variant. Moving on to the water buffalo candidate, allow me to introduce you to the aurochs. Before going into too much detail, you can see this animal's horn shape is a much closer match to that of the water buffalo. Known as the primigenous spiral, yes it took me forever to actually say that, this shape is found on other animals as well, such as the woolly mammoth's tusks. Speaking of the mammoth, sadly it has died. Now back to the aurochs. Sadly, it has died. These cow-like animals lived across Eurasia, however due to unregulated hunting, they disappeared in the early 17th century. The most enthralling thing about this species, though, is what it left behind. Similar to how pigs evolved from boars, and donkeys evolved from... they who shall not be named, domesticated cattle find their roots within the aurochs. With an in-game description reading, often raised in villages, the Hateno cow was bred through selective breeding using these. There's no doubt here, the aurochs directly inspires the Breath of the Wild water buffalo. Finally rounding out the domesticated pack, we have the Hillian Retriever. Like horses, this animal comes with different coats as well, though thankfully at a much more manageable three variations. All three variations are based on the Australian Shepherd, the Border Collie is often a typical candidate for this animal, and both share many physical characteristics, but when it comes down to the accuracy of coat colors, the Australian Shepherd is a much closer match. Both breeds share the tricolor coat, as seen here, but with these two variations, the Border Collie lacks any coats without the white chest. And while the Australian Shepherd doesn't quite match one to one either, you can see here from these copper, red, and black individuals, their coats are primarily uniform throughout. There may be other mixed breeds of dogs that share similar characteristics to these two, but for the sake of simplicity, and being a satisfying answer in itself, the Australian Shepherd is our candidate. And so, we close the chapter on this episode. 
as we reflect upon our journey, I can't help but feel we're forgetting someone. Perhaps it's a trick of my imagination. Yeah, that must be the case. As such, join us next time as we explore. Yeah. Hey! Oh dear. No! Not now! I forgot the Kukos! Please! Leave me alone! These little winged menaces are Kukos, and they've ruined my day. Appearing regularly throughout the Zelda franchise, these demons will attack anyone who simply sneezes in their direction. <laughs> it's not my fault you got caught in the crosshairs of my explosion. Anyways, this iteration of the animal is based upon the leghorn breed of chicken. Or should I say, two leghorn chickens. You see, the leghorn chicken comes in a variety of colors, two of which are a white variant and a brown variant, as seen here. By combining the two, it seems plausible to come up with the color scheme for the cuckoo. Even having similar features such as the comb and cheek spots. However, the comb shape does not appear to be based on any documented shape and appears to be a hybrid of the cushion incarnation shape. On a side note, cuckoos are infamous for their ability to attack foes in a highly organized and coordinated manner in large groups. I'd say it was very impressive if I didn't hate them. This attack strategy is known as flocking, which is used by other bird species such as starlings and other songbirds. This behavior applies to chickens as well, which is obviously why a group of these animals are known as a flock. While not as exaggerated and utterly terrifying as a cuckoo flock, because video games, if you happen to get into a scruffle with a group of these, you may walk away with a few scratches or bites. Thankfully though, the reports of death by chicken are in the single digits, so we can all sleep at night knowing the odds of being assassinated by an avian rat are low. But never zero. And so, as we actually close the chapter on this episode, we recount the animals of Hyrule's villages and farms. While this chapter may be coming to a close, it is not the end of our journey. We will revisit this world again. If you wish to continue this journey, consider subscribing or liking the video. If you feel the animals we cover today may be based upon other species, let me know in the comments. Join us next time as we explore the Biodiverse.